Welcome to the Cannon Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Darius, and today we are joined by Salesian High School soccer coach, Brian Molina. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Oh, pleasure, pleasure, and thank you for having me on. All right, so let's get to know Coach just a little bit. He's been the head coach of Salesian since May of 2014. Correct. Assistant men's soccer coach at Los Angeles City of College since June. He also yes. coaches at Los Angeles Football Academy and Downtown LA Soccer Club. In 2021, his team won the CIF D3 Championship as well as the CIF State Regional Championship. You know, early success. Uh, good, good. It has been a good uh, 2021 year. So, yeah. So, in, in the background right here, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, soon enough they'll have the banner hanging up. They got a bunch of others up there, but they're working yeah, on that one. Two, still. two are two underway. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start from the beginning, Coach. Where are you from? Uh, so born and raised here in Southern California. Um, I am a mother from El Salvador, uh, dad from Guatemala. So I've been grown in Southern California in the Hispanic culture. And that's where, um, you know, my roots are from, you know. So I'm very blessed to have, um, to know both of uh, both uh, cultures and along, uh, you know, put them into uh, my culture of living and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Love LA. Can can uh, can ask for a better place to be at. I also love LA as well. But yeah, as far as growing up, what what was that like, and how did you get into soccer? So my dad, um, he he came, he played in Guatemala professionally. Um, came over, and then he you know started playing around playing, and then got married with my mom. And uh, you know as we got older, growing up. Um, he, I started going to his games and I was like, wow, man, my dad's pretty fast. You know, <laughs> I want to maybe one day be like him. So that's how I got, I grew into the sport, you know, go, going in his games on a Sunday, you know, just seeing him play, having fun. And that's how it got to grow to me. I like the sport myself. I'm the one that told my dad, Hey, could we go kick the ball around first stuff? And then it just took off ever since what, five, six years old. I got you. I so agree. aside from your dad, like, does the rest of your family also heavily involved in soccer? On my mom's side, my uncles have uh, been, uh, they're heavily involved uh, in terms of, like, when they were growing up as well. Um, they were the ones that were always have teams where my dad would go and play as well. So, yeah, but mostly my dad has been the one that um, um, instilled the soccer in us, uh, me and my, my younger brother. Um, so, but, yeah, he's the one that took everything off for us. Okay, that's great. Now, when did you realize that soccer could be more than just a sport for you? So when I, um, I graduated high school, um, I played a year at uh, Glendale College. Um, and then after that first year, I was um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I, I thought that um, two years there, transfer, see what, see what it led. And sure enough, one day, uh, my dad, because he's the he's a chairman at a downtown L.A., um, not at the time yet. Um, he had a team of a U18 boys, right? Freshly grown high school player, high school graduate, played a year of college. He tells me, hey, can you do me a favor? I need you to cover practice for me. And I'm like, man, I have never coached before. You know, he's like, oh, it's okay. I just don't want to practice again. We have a state cup tournament game this weekend. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. You know, I was, I, want, I wanted to, I want to see where this led. And, you know, the little that I've known from college and high school, you know, I put it together and I'm like, well, okay, this, you know, this is fun, you know. And then ever since then, I was like, you know what, maybe I can make a difference in the sport, you know. And that's when I got into it and I knew that, you know, playing time was over, but the learning and the coaching was just getting started. So that's where it really took off. Yeah, so that's essentially it kind of goes over what I was going to go into next. So you played a year at Glendale College. Yeah. So can you talk about that transition from going to high school to playing at the collegiate level? Yeah, it was um, uh, the culture that I had in high school. Um, it helped going into Glendale because, you know, in terms of being like uh, time management, being part of the competitive aspect. So it really helped uh, transition over to the college. So when it, it um, took over um, that season, um, I was the captain that year with with Alex Berger. He's a, a guy that's into um, uh, real estate and all that stuff. And so um, I guess the attributes that I learned throughout high school transcended over where I was able to lead a team, started majority of the season. Actually, almost the whole season besides preseason, I was able to uh, start and stuff. So that was a pretty good um Pretty good year for me, but um, after that, it's just like coaching just took off, you know. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Yeah, so you kind of already touched on, you know, someone kind of 
asked you to come in, did you ever see at any point before then potentially coaching or was that never really in the, the cards initially? No, initially it wasn't in the cards. It was just, um, you know, I wanted to get, I knew I wanted to transfer out of uh, Glendale in two years um, and go and pursue my, my degree. But I didn't uh, know it was, it was just that day. It was just, I guess, sparked, um, you know, a little bit in me that, you know, I grew passion for it. I have passion for it now. And I, I love what I do. So I'm glad that that day happened for me. I was able to cover practice and that's where it really took off. So the passion has just been there ever since. Yeah, ever since. You know, I love the sport, um, but now coaching and being able to, you know, put my own my own uh, culture into it, my own methodology into it, it's just been even more of uh, more rewarding, more passionate about it as I continue to learn and develop and stuff like that. It's um, it's been great so far. Yeah, and you talked about impact. So like the reach of a coach. You, I mean, like as much as a player can have, a coach can have that much more. So have you like noticed that over the years? Absolutely, especially here. This this uh, uh, Salesian High School has just been a place where, you know, we're a small community. Um, and so we're able to work with the players more. Um, you can say, you know, player, coach, coach, player um, type of uh, relationship where, you know, you, you're comfortable in, in, every, in anything they need. You know, it's not just soccer, not just academic or anything like that. So um, the impact that I've been able to have and, and most of the players that have been gone through the program has been very rewarding because they come back and I'm like, coach, I remember when you did this. Coach, you remember this moment? You remember when we did, took this trip? You know, so that those are the, uh, aside from winning and all that stuff, that's it's another rewarding aspect of being here at Salesian that um, they allow me to do this and grow into it and I just love it now. So obviously the impact is always great. But another thing that's great is winning. So last year you guys win the 2021 uh, CFI State Regional. Yeah. Can you talk about that experience? Oh, man, that division, uh, that, that, that CIF um, Division Three final was probably the craziest game I have ever coached in my life, right? So we get a goal in about the 23rd, or 23rd minute in, right, off a of beautiful, it was a throw in. Our senior Freddie crossed it in. Um, whether it, you can debate whether it was a cross or it was a shot, but the ball, the keeper thought it was a cross, came out a little, I saw it went back, and it was in the back of the net. Um, but the two plays prior to that are um, junior, a junior at the time, senior now, Angel Ray has got a yellow card right early on. So we were, um, you know, we, me and the coach staff, we were monitoring that. But as the game went on, the second half, the tempo, the last 20 minutes picked up. So as it picked up, they get a counter, and the only way to stop the counter was to, you know, delay the play or foul. So, unfortunately, Reyes got the double yellow, red card. So, we're 25 minutes left, and we go down 10, all right? And the North Vista had two forwards were by far the best forwards we played all season. So, that they were a handful. So, we go 10, uh, 10 players down. And then, you know, they go, they, we saw right away, three, five, two, they want to put numbers forward. So we're like, okay, we went four, four, one, try to, try to, you know, maintain. They get another counter. Uh, actually, yeah, they get a counter. Our keeper makes a save, so they get a corner. This is about, uh, I would say about five minutes left, a little less than five minutes. And we clear it, and then take, they take a shot, right? And a keeper, uh, the junior time keeper, it bounces off his chest, and as it bounces his chest, it gets uh, cleared like five yards, and the kid takes a takes a, a shot. Keepers on top of the six. This our center back goes behind the goal. Literally, the ball's going right in the corner where like not even the keeper coach. He goes and swats the ball away. So at that point, as he swats the ball away, um, he gets a red card. We're down at nine. That's insane. <laughs> they get a PK. So right? it's 11 on 9 at this point. 11 on 9. It lasts five minutes. Right? They get a PK. I'm like, man, if, we're, if, we're, if Edwin is able to stop this, I remember telling uh, one of the coaches, we're going to win this game. Because going down to 9, and they tie the game up, and you get an additional 20 minutes of overtime with eight players, seven on the field. That would have been crazy. So, uh, you know, PK is getting ready, and he makes a save. He makes a save, you know, he, uh, he does that, and then they, he goes off for a corner, and out of the corner, he makes another save. So we're going 4-4, four, four, no one up top, you know, just trying to, trying to survive. And luckily, you know, we pulled it off. Uh, the kids pulled it off with eight players at the end, but it's probably by far one of the 
most dramatic, more craziest game I've ever been a part of. It coach, it was just like there's no way of coaching. This is just you got to go with it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter what situation that is. That is yeah. insane going down eleven on nine, and it, you yeah. don't hear often a team winning after winning that happened, it, yeah. <laughs> especially in a, a, a game of the stakes. So. The stakes, yeah. <laughs> so it was a, it was it was a crazy crazy event, a crazy game that game. So. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, okay, so you broke down that beautifully, by the way, but yeah. leading up to the championship, how did your team, like, what went to the season to make you guys successful to get to that point? To that point. So I would take that back about four years ago. Um, there was, it was, we were senior heavy this year, that, that year, that, the, uh, 2021, that we won it. Uh, but four years ago, um, that group that came in, it was a young, talented group. And they, um, from the beginning, they played JV. Most of them played JV for about two years. I know uh, three of them. One starter played three years. Started for us in the in the, the probably the whole season uh, last year. Um, but just ha having them mature and grow, and then having that group together for that period of time, just develop over time. Where you know, um, when the season came, I was like, okay, you know, this is something special. Guys from the outside were able to transfer in, and then we were, you know, we missed it. We put it down together, and then, you know, it was just that season was just more. We were, we knew that if we went down a goal, we would get one or two back for sure, you know. So that's how solid that group was. The cohesiveness of everything of going through that season was just phenomenal to see, and it was, it was just a joy to coach them and guide them, and, um, you know, yeah, that was a, it was a special group. Okay, great. Now, going back to how you just broke down that game, clearly you have kind of a good memory of what goes on in each game. How does that help your, like, you know, you with your coaching? It's, uh, it helps me a lot because it helps me, you know, analyze the game um, in, a, in a way where I'm going to be able to help my team adapt to whatever circumstances uh, it happens or whatever the, the opponent is providing. So that's one, uh, one of the biggest things that I think I have, like an attribute as a coach, reading the game and being able to adjust right into it, but not going away from what we do um, as a team or as a program. Um, and then I also have good, good, uh, good coaching staff um, that helps me out with that. So I think that's a big, a big backbone. Um, and doing these moments because every time we play, you know, a cathedral and everything like that, those games are just so intense and um, it's just a chess match and stuff. So, but being able to um, to read the game and put the games, but more importantly, I think knowing what kind of players you have to be able to adjust to those key moments in the game, I think is crucial. Gotcha. And so you just actually, as my next thing, so you played at Cathedral High School, as actually. Yeah. So how is that experience going up and coaching not only your old school, but your old coach? My old coach, yeah. Um, you know, I didn't, like, you know, have a beginning. I didn't know that I was going to get into coaching. So uh, when all this started, I was trying my best to try to go back and see what what uh you know what would he would say uh what what we would do and stuff but it was just so vividly so um playing against them the first couple of year was rough you know because i thought um they were they thought that i was going to the the, the rival school to um to do but it was completely the opposite i took this opportunity to grow um i didn't know it was going to translate into this where it was going to be i was going to be the head coach one day at Salesian high school um, so that's what, uh, yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I remember most is, um, you know, the brotherhood and, the, um, the cohesiveness that, they, that they installed in us there. And I, I remember the taking that here and installing it, but the way that I wanted to. Okay. And so kind of, I, I already told you actually last week we had Arturo on here. Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. You call, you call him coach art. Coach art. Yeah. Okay, coach so art Lopez. Yeah. yeah. Coach art was on here. So your relationship with him, like how, How's that impacted your coaching at all? Do you guys keep in touch? Yeah, you know, uh, even I, last year I reached out to him. Um, I, uh, I, have, I was stuck because, you know, player personnel, players going up and down, short season. You know, I wanted to get some, you know, some advice or some, some guidance into it. And he was, he was very honest with me in terms of that, um, terms the, the advice that he gave me. Um, and I took it and uh, it's really helped me, you know, and I think he's, uh, he's been a person that um, aside from coaching is a person that I admire uh, in terms of, um, you know, the way he treated me throughout the years and everything like that. So but yeah, he's a, it's a it's, a, it's a, it, we have a good relationship. You know, he knows uh, he knows my dad. He knows my mom, uh, my brother and everything. So that relationship we have is just it's all love. 
It's all love. Okay. Yeah. yeah he's, he's quite the coach too. So I, yeah, you definitely <laughs> got some things from him. Yeah. So not only having to navigate just the, you know, the difficulties of maybe losing a player during a game, you're looking at an overall outlook of the world. We have to deal with COVID. How yeah. have you navigated that both as a coach and just in your personal life? Oh man, it was tough. Personal life for me, uh, COVID was, um, was a uh, you can say dream breaker you can say um you know that year um i was supposed we were set to get married with my wife at a um, at a ranch in simi valley mm -hmm. you know we were she was so well we were both excited you know her more because you know she's going through the planning and everything like that i'm just there to support her um it really took like a step uh made me realize a step back you know i'm like okay you know that couldn't happen, um, so we were able to make it work still during COVID, uh, during COVID time. So we we, we got married uh, last year, and uh, sorry, in 2020. Um, still not the dream wedding that we were doing, but that was, you know, we took a step back, but it also allowed us to uh, buy a house, you know, so that's, we were able to uh, make that, uh, make that work, make everything work, and allowed us to take a step back and really analyze what we were doing on a personal for me it was more of a, okay where do I want to go with this you know where I want to go with with soccer and um and everything so um it was tough you know even the soccer aspect was tough because um club everything was shut you know he Salesian was shut uh all LESD schools were shut um so pretty much the only thing that was left is uh zoom so we were having Zoom practices online, and, you know, it wasn't the same, but it was nice to see the kids, even though you're not seeing them in person, um, it, just to, you know. Zoom practice, what yeah. does that entail? Oh, um, it was, it was uh, I would just tell the kids, get a ball and two cones and, you know, a camera where I can see you, find a quiet space, and let's do it, you know. <laughs> so we were doing, like, uh, you know, ball work and all that stuff for about half an hour, and then the last 20 minutes we were just, uh, you know, catch up, making sure we would laugh a little, get away from everything that was going on through the world, but... Um, yeah, it was tough. And when things opened up here, even then, um, the kids were remote at school. Um, so we would train, I believe it was at two 30 from two 30 to about four. And then we would have to make it work because baseball was here. Football was here. We were all in the same season. So that was just, uh, it was crazy. But the school, uh, Salesian high school did manage it in, in a way where, um, you know, check in. Everything was very in order for us and made it happen for us. So we didn't have any any difficulties uh, um, going forward with the season. Although it was short or everything like that, they did a phenomenal job of handling that. I mean, clearly you guys had a winning season. So yeah, yeah I guess you navigated <laughs> it pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's last season. Let's talk about this season. Off to, you know, not the best start, six, five, and three. Yeah. Two, two and two in the Delray League play. Yeah. Um, so talk about what's gone into that start and what you guys have to do to kind of get on the track, the winning track. That on the is. winning track. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's been, uh, it's, it's, uh, so, you know, we, we just ended like about five, six months ago and then we're back at it again. Right. So I think the biggest thing that right now we're facing is trying to get people healthy, uh, making sure that, um, we have, you know, the group that's going forward. Uh, that's going to be once we hit those playoffs, okay, you know, it's playoff mode, you know. So I think right now uh, we're able to get everybody healthy. We had everybody healthy less, this last Sunday finally uh, where we had no cases or anything like that or the kids sitting out or anything like that or, or in isolation, I should say. Um, so I think just getting this group up and going and getting them together and playing a little, uh, playing more. Uh, together, I think as the season and the the the, um, the league goes on, we're gonna hit our, we're gonna get hot at the right time, I believe, because I I I'm a strong believer that uh, we're gonna be back where we were a year ago with this group, um, because it's uh, we're just so resilient and so uh, so talented. Um, so I believe that this year we should be back to where we were, and it's just getting this. You know, we have the pieces. It's just you know keeping everybody healthy, getting everybody uh, back into into form is going to be the biggest thing the biggest challenge that we have as a coaching staff uh to be able to to continue to ride to ride this okay so not only do you coach here like i said mentioned at the top you coach actually at a ton of places can you yeah. talk about that experience and how you manage to balance all these different oh man i'll tell you this much uh thank god for a toyota rav4 <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that is just because going uh, balancing all the coaching uh, and all the driving and still having time for my wife and family and stuff like that. It was um, it was it's a challenge, but more importantly, juggling, it was just more of time management. 
of going there. Um, I think it was uh, what helped a lot is that Salesian is in the middle of um, of those places. So whether I need to go into uh, Southern California, uh, South LA, or downtown, or even into you know Montebello area, it was more ju- it uh, it was more juggling uh, making sure that um, there's enough time in between. Uh, each session to be able to regroup and, you know, and, you know, go out there and perform. Because even though I have a group here at Salesian, uh, these kids expect everything from us, right, and from me. And then um, being able to regroup and then seeing a different set of guys and be like, okay, you know, coaches expect us. Uh, they're expecting me, you know, to guide them and coach them and train them and stuff like that. So it was uh, it, it was it was a challenge. It still is a challenge right up to right now. But, uh, you know, just the love and the passion for the sport is what drives me to do it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And working with all those teams now with all these years under your belt, what's your approach to coaching a soccer team? Uh, I think the biggest one is, you know, making sure that we have a culture where a player can come in, lead, uh, be guided and be more importantly, um, fall in love with the program, with the school. That's more problem. If you have those uh, already and still coming into Salesian High School, you know, there shouldn't be a problem why you shouldn't grow from this. You know, we, we give you a platform to go out and display. You know, that's what we do. We, we go out and travel. We go out and do different things for you to um, for you to grow. And that's more importantly, you know, we what we want to do is make sure that you come in here. You you know, they say a saying, enter, enter to lead, you know, and, and then leave to serve and stuff like that. So that's pretty much... Um, um, what, what, it, what it would be. So it's just the good attitude, leadership, but also like a sense of buying in. Yeah, I buying into the culture. And to what I mean by culture for you at Salesian, it means uh, Salesian soccer, more importantly, is just, you know, you have to understand that we're a competitive program. So if you're competitive and you know how to how to compete and how to go out there and do and do what you have to do, that's all you ask for. Because that's what that's what the universities and the collegiate programs want want to be. It's like, okay, how can you move on from a mistake that you just did during the game? You know, can you move on right away? Um, so those are the little things that we try to install in them right away coming into the program as freshmen or if they come as, as, as transfers or anything. It's, you know, buying into what we're doing here. I got gotcha. you. And now with all these coaching positions, they're all based in L.A. Yeah. So at this point, you're, I mean, I mean, you've grown up here, too. So you're clearly ingrained into the culture, into the community. Can you talk about the support from, like, both the parents and just the overall community? Yeah, the community here at Salesian has been um, phenomenal. You know, Mr. Johnson, uh, the principal here at Salesian, has um, been with me. I would forever be grateful for him because he's the one that's given me the opportunity to be able to showcase what I can do and be able to grow in, into this and be able to guide and put the school in a position to, you know, to bring joy and culture into it. Um, so that's, I think Salesian has been a big part of who I've been as a coach. So as developing as a person and, and as a coach, I think here has been a stepping stone in my coaching career where now I can take this approach into the, into the club and being able to manage it the way I would want to manage it with players and parents and stuff. And, you know, the parents here have bought into what we've done uh, over, this, over, the, over the course of the years. So, um, you know, I've been having very good parent support. You know, you know luckily nobody getting in the way of, of any, any decisions or anything like that, which is great. Um, but overall, you know, the parent support here, I love it. Um, you know, um, it's, been, it's been great over the years, especially last year when we needed stuff. Um, we needed things to get done with everything going on, you know, the finals and, the, and all that stuff. So it's been, it's been great. Yeah, no, a big part that's overlooked when it comes to coaching, especially in high school, is the support from the parents. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad you got, were able to get yeah. that. But, yeah, and the same is true for any type of sport. And, like, taking a step back from soccer and just looking at sports as a whole, can you talk about why you think sports are so important just growing up, what, whether it's a community, to a kid's? You know, I think it's 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 important because it allows a kid to be away from home and, in, in, uh, in, you know, um, how do you say just reenact with other kids, uh, be a part of a team, you know, teamwork, bonding, um, having to go down in those moments, you know, how to kind of come up as, you know, with teammates or the people around you. I think in just here in general, I just, it's, it's a big part, you know, whether the kids are playing multiple sports or just one sport, you know, 
kids prefer to be on teams with, you know, with their teammates or classmates or their friends to be able to continue to, you know, bond with them and grow up. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a good teaching tool for kids to grow up and it teaches, you know, just at the sport, but about life in general. Gotcha. So again, speaking about life in general, because it's more than just the sport. I've asked this to every high school coach because it's important, especially in the educational realm, to help them grow not only on the field, but off the field. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times the kids get consumed. They make the sport the number one priority. So what do you do to help like those kids balance it, make sure they work on other aspects of their life aside from the, just the sport? I say, so we go by a model here where it goes uh, faith, family, and football. You know, the three the three Fs, you can say, right? So um, we tell the the, play, the student athletes here that are part of the program that, you know, before anything, uh, even before the academics, it's family. You know, having that uh, uh, at home. Because before you come to school or anything like that, you're at home. You know, are you in a good relationship with your parents? You know, are you guys speaking? Um, so that's pretty much, that, that's, that'll be the main one. The, the first one is, uh, one of our coaches always says this to all the players every time we, we start season. If you don't get done what needs to be get done in the classroom, then we can't use you on the field. So um, that, those words, even though they're kind of vague or anything, it, it, it clicks to the, to the students, to the student athletes. And it's just like um, they understand that if they're not doing their, their part in the classroom, you know, they're not going to be able to be on the field. So that means making grades, training assignments, you know, discipline or attitude or, you know, anything. And it's a, it's a big part last year. Um, for us, um, we had, I think, half of the, half of the lettermen were soccer players. Um, half of them, more than half of the, the program was in honor roll. You know, so um, there's a saying that Jeremy Gunn at Stanford Soccer says that, if the player takes care of his academics or works hard in the classroom, the soccer wouldn't be, a, it's not a problem. This is something they love, you know, but if they're not doing what they're not supposed to do in the classroom, then it was a reflection of what they do in the classroom on the soccer field, whether or not their work rate is not there, they're lazy and stuff like that. So that's uh, something we try to make them understand right away that if you need to take, a, you need to take things um, care in the classroom first before you come to it, before giving yourself a chance where you want to go to the next level. So that has been um, a key focus. You know, we, I don't think we've lost any kids in the last three seasons uh, to academic grades. So that's been uh, true to our coaches that are part of the, uh, the staff here and everything like that. And, you know, the kids are just bright and they understand that and part of the culture here at the program. Three years. Okay, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Three three years. Years. <laughs> it almost seems like every year there's at least one. So, yeah, uh, that's a pretty good accomplishment. And, again, it's kind of like you talked about. There's a day you have to hang up the cleats. So if they're um, only focused on the sport, when all of a sudden done, they might not have anything. So it's really important to kind of focus on that. I mean, you found coaching. So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we had a, we had a couple of seniors last week. Um, uh, last week, sorry, last year that um, said, coach, you know, I don't, th we were, you know, we were asking, well, maybe you want to go to a JC and play or you were going to go, you know what, coach, after high school, you know, this has been a phenomenal experience for me, but I think, you know, I'm hanging up the boots, but I know what I want to do in college. I was all like, that's, at least you're going to be going on to a four year. That's all I, uh, you know, that was joy to me because, you know, even though you're not playing, you understand what the, wor what the world's coming to you and you know, you have a game plan. And so that, that for me, has been um it's good it's a joy to a joy to hear them even when they come back and stuff like that so oh exactly it's a it's a reflection of leadership at the top aka the coaches yeah <laughs> so that's good that's a good reflection on you and another way to do it is by an example so you currently are working your master's or did you receive your master's so i was i'm i was doing my uh master's in in uh coaching at concordia um i took a pause for it right now and now i'm currently in my b license uh for coaching so I was, uh, I felt that I needed to do that this first before going to get my master's, um, just trying to figure out what the next step is. Um, so I got my feet a little wet with LACC a little bit this year. Um, so I, I know what I need to do. So, but getting my coaching license um, and continue to learn and develop as a person, as a coach um, is more important to me right now. Um, and after this is over with, absolutely in the summer, I think I'm, um, I'm going for my master's. I just don't know where, where and what I'm going to get my master's in, but I know that coaching is going to be part of it. Um, so getting coaching licensing right now and continue to learn through uh, club mentors and everything like that, it's, it's a priority for me right now. 
Yeah, and so by handling all this and balancing all you're doing while also getting that taken care of, if a kid tries to make an excuse, you'd be like, no, if I'm doing it, you can do it too. Perfect example. (laughs) (laughs) So you've been here for seven, uh, this is your eighth year now, right? Eighth year, yeah. Eighth year, okay, great. Do you see yourself here for the foreseeable future? Do you see collegiate coaching path? What what does the future look like? Um, here, I have a. I would say I have a couple years left. Um, I don't see myself here in the like in the future. Future, you can say. Uh, absolutely, my goal is to get to the collegiate. Uh, collegiate, whether it's D one, D two, or D three, uh, or even even the community college. You know, that is my goal. And then. Um, what I would like to continue to learn too after is um, to be a technical director, uh, to to be part maybe of a club, local club here, um, you know, and guide the younger players um, through the competitive aspect and the leadership and development. So that way, you know, when they get into high school or they continue to go, they're um, they're ready to go. So, but yeah, absolutely. I think this year started. Uh, Absolutely. I think this year at LACC, being a first year, you know, I didn't know Coach Javi at LACC or Coach Bernard, Coach Andy, going in there as a new as a new coach, learning from them how to run it, how to run a uh, college uh, team. It was one of the, uh, an experience that I was like forever be grateful because that made me open. I'm like, OK, in order to do this, this needs to happen and stuff. And so I was able to. Uh, realize that and see that very good up close this year and and um, yeah I'm excited about this season too <laughs> okay and one of the last things I want to touch on so you, you've done a lot you have to balance a lot I keep on using the word balance yeah. you really have had to do that <laughs> um, how has the support from the wife been like I'm sure that's been a big part of this oh, whole process man. we got to give love to the wife so absolutely man she is uh, you know when we we were dating um, she understood and like I would I would always be away at tournaments. I would always be away um, at, at tournaments and stay over. So I would be gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe even Monday. Um, she, for me, has been a blessing for me because she supports me 100% in what I love to do. Um, she's there. Every time she gets a, a, a chance to be at the games and, and everything, she is, uh, she's my number one supporter, you can say, and I forever love her. Uh, for supporting me and I do and I do the same with her as well and like this past Sunday you know we just had a baby about a month ago oh wow congratulations uh, thank you uh she was there you know a month off of uh, a month and a month and two weeks she was there uh, baby baby daughter was there too so uh yeah my wife has been great throughout the year she's always been my number one supporter and you know even those tough times where I can't balance or have a little breakdown or anything like that she's been my backbone uh a hundred percent and uh man i'm so blessed <laughs> okay so you mean you've accomplished quite a bit recently you know won a state title had a kid got married yeah that's quite a bit well yeah. that's about it for us we want to congratulate you on all the success all right thank you appreciate thank it thank you for having me on for sure thanks for joining yeah. us yeah thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe and follow us on instagram at canon sports tiktok at canon sports official and of course canonsports.com for all your sporting goods needs Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.